Welcome to our presentation on Mutual Fund Basics Part 1, brought to you by RebelCapitalist.com. Now, stay tuned to RebelCapitalist.com because we are going to cover mutual funds in some detail in future sessions at Rebel Capitalist. So what are we going to cover today in Mutual Fund Basics Part 1? We're going to talk about what is a mutual fund. Then we will discuss the benefits of a mutual fund how to begin investing in mutual funds, the difference between no-load and load mutual funds, and we're going to briefly discuss fees and expenses of mutual funds. So what is a mutual fund? Well, to start, mutual funds are created and managed by an uh, investment management company or a what is called a money manager. Uh, Fidelity, Vanguard, Oppenheimer are uh, some of the more popular investment management companies. Uh, a, an investment in a mutual fund is an investment in a group of assets that achieve a certain investment objective, such as growth and in income, uh, capital appreciation, low risk, and when you purchase shares of a mutual fund, you become a shareholder of that mutual fund. It's very similar to purchasing shares or stock in a company. You're purchasing, sh purchasing shares of that mutual fund. Let's continue talking about what is a mutual fund. Now, the price of a share of a mutual fund is called net, net asset value, NAV. This is the equivalent of the of a stock price. Now, the NAV times the number of shares you own determines the value of your fund investment or mutual fund. The NAV is determined by the total value of the securities in the portfolio of that mutual fund, minus any liabilities such as expenditures of the fund, divided by the number of shares outstanding on the market. And the NAV, or net asset value, uh, can be found in uh, business sections of newspapers near the stock listings or online at Yahoo Finance or Morningstar.com or MarketWatch.com. So what are the benefits of owning a mutual fund? Well, it's a good way to start investing for beginners. This is how I started investing in the stock market. I purchased a stock mutual fund um, my freshman year of college. I made the minimum initial investment, and I purchased several shares of a particular mutual fund. M the mutual fund is professionally managed. Uh, now, this could be a negative if management is bad, and this is why it's very important to do our research to determine the effectiveness of these investment managers or money managers. Investing in mutual funds is a good way to diversify our investment portfolio at a relatively low cost. And they're very convenient. They're very convenient in the sense that you own one or more shares of a particular uh, mutual fund or a diversified portfolio. Uh, you only have to track maybe one or two or three mutual funds, the net asset values of those. I don't recommend people track them daily. Um, but, you know, on a monthly or quarterly basis. Uh, and it's, it's better doing that than having to track, say, 15 individual stocks or uh, 20 uh, individual stocks and bonds. So it's very convenient from that standpoint of tracking. So how do we get started investing in, in, in mutual funds, investing in mutual funds? Well, the first thing we need to do and this is part of an overall written plan. I strongly encourage people, again, this is part of a financial, overall written financial plan. Uh, what are, you have to determine what are your investment objectives? What are you trying to achieve with this investment? The next, you have to research, research, research. Uh, so good sources are Morningstar.com. You have Yahoo Finance, Market Watch. Uh, in your, what you're researching is obviously the historic, uh, returns, total returns that the mutual fund achieved. And you're also looking at the expenses of the mu 
mutual fund. Now, this is very important. Uh, you, and this is easy to obtain. Uh, you should obtain what's called a prospectus of that mutual fund. Uh, prospectus is a public disclosure document required by law. And mutual fund companies, I'm sure, probably have them online. If you go online to their sites, uh, you might be able to download the PDF or call them up, ask them to mail you a, a, a prospectus of that particular mutual fund and read it. I know it's very tedious and, and some of it is legalese, but read the prospectus of that mutual fund you're interested in so that you, you, you become familiar with what the cost structure are, is, the fee structure is, um, you know, the, the management's philosophy, investment philosophy. Now, most mutual funds require an initial investment. It can range anywhere between $500 to $2,000. Now, again, I have to stress, you make sure you read and understand the, pros the prospectus uh, because this is where, this is the main public disclosure document for a mutual fund, and all the details of that mutual fund are, should be contained in that prospectus. Compare the expense ratios. Uh, in annual total returns between the mutual funds that you're interested in. And now it's very convenient. You can buy shares of that mutual fund directly from invest the investment management company, such as Fidelity or, or Oppenheimer or Vanguard. Uh, you can even do it online. Or you could go through your broker. You know, if you, if you have an online brokerage service like E-Trade, uh, you could purchase thousands of, of, of mutual funds through, through uh, your broker. No load versus load. This is very important uh, when investing in mutual funds. There are two very broad categories of mutual funds. You have the no load fund and load fund. Uh, load means sales charges, such as sales commissions. But we have to be careful. You have to watch out because sometimes there are back end lo loads. Uh, if you don't see a, see a, a sales commission, uh, which is considered an upfront load, there might be back end loads. Uh, a typical back-end load is an exit fee, sometimes up to 5% of the sales price or sales proceeds if a shareholder uh, sells their shares within the first year of ownership. And sometimes these exit fees will survive for several years, uh, but will decrease maybe 1% uh, after the first year. There are 12B1 fees. These are annual marketing fees, uh, believe it or not. Uh, money managers, investment uh, management companies will charge the shareholders to market the fund. This is no benefit to current shareholders because they already own the fund, but this is a way for money managers to recoup some of their fees. Avoid load funds. There is really no reason for someone to invest in a load fund. Studies have shown that no load funds uh, actually outperform load funds. So again, I just stay away from load funds. Be careful. Again, I cannot stress enough, read the prospectus of that mutual fund to see, to determine whether it's a, 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 there are any hidden or back-end uh, load charges. Fees and expenses. Now, mutual fund or investment fund managers charge certain fees and expenses. And it's very important that we uh, understand these fees and expenses before, before investing. And again, this is where the prospectus comes in. Uh, you have investment advisory fees or management fees. You have, obviously, administrative fees. Uh, and again, I, I mentioned in previous slides, 12B1 or uh, distribution or marketing fees. Now, the way we figure out the how or the, the cumulative effect of all these uh, expenses of a mutual fund is in the expense ratio. This is the cost of owning that mutual fund for a shareholder. It includes all of the fees and expenses that I mentioned above. And this allows us this expense ratio, which should be disclosed in the prospectus, and, and you can find uh, typically in the uh, quotes that that are on uh, marketwatch.com or yahoo finance or even morningstar.com 
uh, this expense ratio allows investors or potential investors to compare the cost of various mutual funds. That concludes our presentation on mutual fund basics part one. Thank you for your attention. Please visit us at rebelcapitalist.com. Have a good day and good luck.